Fair value gaps tell you everything. And these people here prove it. I recently passed a challenge as well using the exact things that you will learn in this video. You will learn about it in six steps. The first step is defining everything because fair value gaps telling you everything is very vague as in what is everything in trading the word everything is every step that you need to take to get to a trade outcome and every step you need to take is the foundational levels so we start off with bias then we have narrative then we have context then we have entry and then we have risk management those foundational levels are everything in trading as in if you follow those steps you will either get to a profitable or unprofitable outcome. We hope profitable outcome. And at every single step of those foundational levels, you can use one single concept, which is fair value gaps. So the first thing in those foundation levels is how do the fair value gaps tell us what the bias is? Again, I am a man of defining things. I love dissecting things. I love defining things because if we define things, we are able to be on the same page and we understand things. The word bias can be defined by the following. A bias is a direction in a market. So is the market going higher? Is the market going lower? Very simple. That is determined by our draw on liquidity. What does that mean, a draw on liquidity? A draw on liquidity is a PD array that you think price might head towards next. So a certain level where you expect price to move to. Well, guess what? That could be a fair value gap. So the first step right here, if we look at our chart, start on the monthly time frame. And the only thing I would want you to do is find fair value gaps. Again, what is a fair value gap even? Fair value gap, the three steps, right? We have one candle, then we have an expansion phase candle, which is the actual fair value gap. It's the body of the fair value gap. And then we have the third candle. That closure of the third candle creates the fair value gap. So here we have this fair value gap right there on the monthly time frame perfect let's take that into account because that is very valuable now let's go down another time frame into the weekly time frame right there to find another fair value gap where here we also have fair value gap right there if there is only one fair value gap either on the monthly or the weekly that's perfectly fine right now we have two which is also absolutely perfect because whilst we are coming out of that monthly fair value gap right there, those fair value gaps can act as two things. I usually mention you can play around with a fair value gap. What does that mean, playing around with a fair value gap? Well, a fair value gap acts as a magnet, but also as a rocket. So it attracts, but also repulses price action. So when you have a fair value gap, especially on the higher time frame, monthly, weekly, and daily, you will see that those fair value gaps will get traded into, but also get traded out of. So when we trade into this monthly fair value gap right there, and we leave behind a weekly fair value gap, what could be a reasonable target? Well, that monthly fair value gap acted as a magnet right now. We only have one magnet left, and that is the weekly fair value gap. So if one magnet has been used up, which can now become a rocket, it can repulse price action, it can push it away towards which magnet can it push price away? Well, we have a new fair value gap right there, which can act as a magnet as well. So that weekly fair value gap that we have right there could be our potential draw on liquidity, where the fair value gap that acts as a magnet, but also as a rocket, that draw on liquidity, if that is our draw on liquidity, we are expecting the next few candles right there to be potential up candles where price can be bullish, it can head higher a little bit towards that weekly fair value gap, which is acting as a magnet. Now, why do those fair value gaps act as a magnet and as a rocket? You can see it as the following. When price is moving lower right there, price went too fast. Why did it go too fast? It went so fast that only sellers right there got a fair chance to get involved. So if price went too fast right there, which is again, seen through that fair value gap we need to retrace back into that oftentimes to indeed offer fair value where buyers right now where buyers also need a fair chance to get involved so if we move too fast towards one side that's not fair value we need to offer fair value in those fair value gaps to then continue lower or continue higher to give fair price action to everybody in the market so now we have determined the first step a bias we have to draw on liquidity. That draw on liquidity leads to a potential direction, which is 
only seen through fair value gaps right now. Mark out those fair value gaps and see how we deliver towards those fair value gaps. The draw liquidity leads to that direction. The draw liquidity being that weekly fair value gap right there, that is where we can potentially head towards. That leads to the understanding of a potential direction. So we can potentially head higher for a little bit, at least until we reach that weekly fair value gap. Why do I say potential direction? Because nothing is confirmed just yet. We can't just press buy or sell right here. We need the second step. We need a narrative. So how are we going to deliver back into that weekly fair value gap? Well, this is where waiting comes in, but also the lower time frame comes in. And when I refer to lower time frame in this case, more so the daily, the four hour. Right here, going down a singular time frame, looking at the daily time frame, we also see this daily fair value gap, which we can potentially continue lower off of, right? Well, this is where we need to understand, again, the time frame alignment, the relativity theory, as I like to call it, where we start on the monthly time frame with a purpose, because the monthly, the weekly are stronger fair value gaps than the daily, the four hour, the lower you go, the weaker those fair value gaps. So it's quite important to understand that if you have a daily fair value gap right there below a weekly fair value gap, the weekly fair value gap is right above it, that weekly fair value gap is a stronger magnet. So we will more likely head towards the weekly fair value gap to potentially continue lower off of that instead of the daily fair value gap right there. Now with narrative, it's important to understand again, what is the definition of narrative? Narrative is how we can deliver there. So if we are going higher right there, where are we going higher from? What is the discount array that will be responsible to move into this fair value gap right there? In other words, what is the bullish fair value gap that will be responsible to push price into that bearish fair value gap or draw liquidity? So what do we do? We find a fair value gap. We again do the same thing. We go down time frames. So we went from the monthly to the weekly to now the daily. Is there a daily fair value gap currently? No, not yet. So we go into the four hour to find a fair value gap. On the four hour, do we have a fair value gap right here that could push price into that weekly fair value gap? Yes. If we pay a little bit more attention to detail as well for a bias, we see earlier on, which is a great sign as well, that on the four hour, we do not follow through lower off of those previous fair value gaps. So what I mean by that is we have these fair value gaps right here and they do not push lower and do not create a new fair value gap going lower. It's a great indication that we do actually want to continue higher. Just a small detail that helps you with your potential bias as well. Just a confirmation. So right here, if we continue with our narrative, then we have now found a fair value gap, which we can potentially continue higher from towards the weekly fair value gap. That is essentially narrative checked off because now you move into the third step. Extremely important to understand when we're talking about entries and when you go into entries. Because the third step is context. Context is the area where you look for entries. So I tell you, fair value gaps tell you everything, but right here, I am going to incorporate one small thing. I hope you don't mind, but it's extremely beneficial. So right here, if we want to continue higher off of this fair value gap, that is the narrative, that is the boundary. The boundary, if we reach that, we can go into the lower time frame. So you move from narrative to boundary. That boundary is the trigger. That boundary is the trigger for the context to go into your entry time frame. So when we right here have this fair value gap, which we can continue higher from, is the first type of context. Again, that boundary, that narrative, which we can go higher from. Then we also have a target. A target is the first opposing premium array. And in this case, premium array, of course, if we were looking at bearish price action, it would be the first opposing discount array. Now that in itself, don't get me wrong, can also be a fair value gap, right? But I like to have that as a swing point. A swing point is a swing high or a swing low. So when I'm talking about a swing point, and in this case, I'm going to talk about a swing high, it's again a three candle pattern where you have one candle, which is higher than the candle to the left of it and higher than the candle to the right of it. it creates a swing high. If you inverse that, you have a swing low. So right here, when we continue higher off of this fair value gap right there, or we want to continue higher off of that, then we will reach a first opposing premium A, which oftentimes is a swing high. That creates this area where we can now look for an entry right there. That is your context area. Now, why do I ignore this sting into that fair value gap that we already have with that candle right there? 
It's 5 p.m. New York local time. It's market rollover. If you're not familiar with market rollover, it's essentially where the broker, like it already says in the name, it rolls over towards the next day. So the broker can mess around a little bit. The price action is not universally agreed on. Usually you get some weird wicks, etc. When that is the case, at that specific time, I ignore it. I don't see that as a sting into a fair value gap just yet because it's not universally agreed upon with all the brokers out there because it's essentially the broker doing some weird stuff on the back end on their own. So we ignore that wick right there that we had into that fair value gap. So this right here is the first move into that fair value gap, into the narrative area where we can potentially continue higher from. We have that swing high, but importantly, more importantly, of course, we still have this draw liquidity right there. And when we still have that draw liquidity right here, we can still look to target that. So here, what do we do? Well, now we arrive at the fourth step. The fourth step is the entry, where again, it is extremely key to understand time frame alignment. When we have a four hour fair value gap right there, and you are looking to use sharp turn entries. So sharp turn entry is essentially quite simple. It's a fair value gap higher, potentially. I'll go into more detail in a little bit. But when you use the four hour, use 15 minute entry confirmation. When you use daily, use one hour weekly, four hour monthly, daily, one hour, five minutes, 15 minutes, the one minute, if you want to use sharp turn entries. If you want more confirmation, and in my trading plan, for example, what I tend to do is I want two lags higher. So instead of using the four hour and then the 50 minute, I use the four hour and the five minute as well. But for this example and for this sharp turn entry, I'm going to use the four hour and the 15 minute combination. So right here, once we reach this gray box, the fair value gap, which we can potentially continue higher from, it acts as a magnet, acts as a rocket right now. We can go into the 50 minute to simply set find our fair value gap going higher. So what a sharp turn is, a fair value gap into the higher time frame for value gap that you are looking to confirm on the lower time frame right now, and then a fair value gap out. So a fair value gap down, fair value gap up. Does not have to be overlapping, does not have to be a BPR or anything like that. It's just a fair value gap down, fair value gap up. That creates a sharp turn. So right here, we have the fair value gaps going down. That's not a problem anymore. We now need a fair value gap going up. Right there, we create a fair value gap going up. The entry in itself is usually the most easy part. The bias, the narrative, building up that story. The story, again, needs to write itself. That is usually the most difficult part where people actually mess up. Anyone can find an entry anywhere. It's about where you actually enter. So if you are trying to practice this and you're trying to learn this, focus on good fair value gaps that we mentioned throughout the videos. That is extremely crucial. A good story for your bias and your narrative. Now, right here, we can again look for an entry until we reach this high right there. So any 15 minute entry that we have with a fair value gap going higher is essentially the entry. That's as simple as it is. So here, the fair value gap itself right there can be an entry. Let's keep this simple. Let's just say we enter within the fair value gap itself and we cover the sharp turn low. So the fair value gap right there left behind again a swing low right there. That swing low is where I cover my stop loss. And I target very simply said a one to two right there. You can eventually, you can even see this one to two is quite conservative. You don't need to target this full on fair value gap right there. Again, the further the target, most likely also the lower your win rate. So if you are fine with taking eight hits before you take a winner like this, be my guest. I personally am not a big fan of that. My psychology is quite crucial to me. So I like to have a little bit of higher win rate, lower RR for my targets, which is perfectly fine by me. So right here, I like to go for a one to two RR right there. Eventually, once you get more experienced, you can potentially look to target more. Start off being profitable with low RR. There's nothing worse than going for those super high RR just starting out with trading. There's no need for that. If you can be profitable with one to two, then slowly build your way up. So right here, we again can see that eventually the target can become the context high and eventually it can become that draw liquidity that we had initially right there. But we start off with a one to two. Why? Because 
right here, this fair value gap does not even need to follow through with a huge boost higher right there in order for us to hit take profit. It needs to have a small rejection right there in order for us to hit take profit, which is arguably the easiest thing price can do right there. So that's the entry. Can be a limit order, marked execution, whatever you want. Now, right here, once you are in the trade, you want to leave it running until you have a clear reason to go break even. What is a good reason to go break even? You go break even when price has no reason to return anymore. What does that even mean? Price has no reason to return when it creates a fair value gap above your entry, the full fair value gap. What do I mean by that? The full three candle pattern being above your entry in this case. So let's take this scenario. Right here, we entered at this line. So let's put it to the right. Let's say we had a bigger stop loss and our target was one to two still, but it was a lot higher. We did not hit our take profit like we did just now. So let's say we are still in this trade. Well, if we are still in this trade, we have this three candle pattern being created for that fair value gap right there, where this is the full three candle pattern. That full three candle pattern is still inside our entry. So it still has a reason to sting into a little bit lower to then continue higher. Where right now we have this fair value gap right here being created with this three candle pattern. This three candle pattern is fully above our entry level. That is safe to go break even right now because ideally that fair value gap should hold if we want to still continue higher. If that's not the case, I want to be break even because I do not trust the trade anymore. So right here, we eventually, if we were to target that far, we would have hit break even right there before we actually continued higher, which is perfectly fine. We can look for a re-entry afterwards if we want to, but our initial entry already hit take profit. And where was our initial entry? Our initial entry was again sitting right there covering that swing low and targeting a one to two where this sting right here would have been an easy one to two right there. The best thing to do if you do notice that you have a lot of break evens before your take profit gets hit. So it's not actually prevented losses, but it's more so missed winners. And if you gather that data and your data tells you that you can actually be a bit more loose with your break even perfectly fine. Then if that's the case, I would argue either start off with stop loss or take profit. That's it. Don't manage your risk until you have more data supporting the ID. But again, it's only if you have a lot of missed winners due to you going break even a little bit too early. Now for your risk percentage and how much you actually want to risk, I have left a notion completely free. Don't need to do anything. I've left it in the description so you can check it out and you can go over that schematic yourself how much i personally like to use to risk i like to use boundaries in that case now this process of those foundational levels and those fair value gaps telling us everything that repeats except for one percent maybe because we use those swing points but everything was told by fair value gaps so right here if we now reach that weekly fair value gap it's the same thought process again weekly fair value gap which can act as a magnet but also as a rocket meaning it can potentially push lower off of that now right here if we want to push lower then we have a potential bias right which is bearish price action so if the weekly fair value gap wants to push lower we are bearish now we wait for a narrative so do we actually have a reason to support that id do we see a four hour sharp turn for example remember weekly fair value gap paired with a four hour sharp turn where here we have this four hour sharp turn sitting right there. That in itself can already again be a trade ID covering the highs, targeting that one to two, where you do not need that weekly value to follow through all the way towards the lows. Just a one to two is enough. And even if you do not want that to be an entry, then you can just confirm it through. What does that mean? Well, on the four hour right here, this is a four hour sharp turn entry, right? But that four hour fair value gap sitting right there in itself is also a narrative. It's again context area. And it's again where you can go into the 15 minute time frame to look for your entry, to look for your risk management after your entry as well. You only need to master one concept, which in this case can just be fair value gaps. Again, in trading, less is more right here. So if you want to master something like trading, I would advise focus on, for example, just fair value gaps. And when you master those, 
that will truly pay off. There's a lot to one singular concept. There's a lot of small details to fair value gaps. Again, the risk management is in the description as well, the risk management sheet. I hope this somewhat helped you and I hope we're able to define things together. All right, perfect. Thank you.